uh, person Ridgia, right? How did we? Yeah, I pronounce? think so. Something along those lines. We apologize if we don't get your name correct. I like but, the name. Uh, it's yeah, it's a pretty name. Um, how can a go good God allow people to go to hell? Why didn't God just forgive Adam and Eve? Why doesn't God stop suffering? Why did God allow Satan to control this universe? If God was omnipotent, why doesn't God stop Satan? Wow, this really ties into, yeah, a lot yeah, of stuff exactly. we've just been talking about. This is a, um, there's a lot of questions in there. I'm sure you can handle them, Fortina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tina's on mute. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I've got a little situation here. But uh, yeah. No, yeah, I think I saw you written some uh, verses, but I, th I think we're perfect. So I, I think Jay has a great answer. Unless, All right. If that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing so much talking today. But. That's okay. I usually do. I never stop talking. So <laughs> it's good to, to do some listening. I have two ears and one mouth. <laughs> and you've got a little one there who needs some attention. So <laughs> Yeah, she's sick this week. So Aww. let me fix our camera just Yay, no, I'm brighter. All right. So, where do we start in this? Well, I always suggest we start with the key to the Bible. The, the fundamental key to understanding the Bible is this. 1 John 4, 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. We need to see everything in the Bible through the lens, God is love. I mean, if you believe the Bible is true, then this verse must be true. And if you're reading a verse to not be consistent with this verse, you need to go back and understand its context and try to understand how is this showing us God is love. And I think we already talked about a little, a little bit, you know, why did God have to kick Adam and Eve out of the garden? Because they rebelled against God, they rejected God, they wanted to listen to Satan. They said, we trust Satan more than God, and God's like, okay, I, you know, I have this deal with Satan, and you chose to go with Satan, now, now you guys... I, you can't have access to the, to the tree of life because then you would live forever. And the worst thing to have is a is a murderer, thief, adulterer, sinner living forever and destroying the universe, destroying themselves. So God kicks him out, cuts him off from the tree of life. But none of this means God didn't forgive them. God forgave them, right? Because it says God made them clothes out of lambskin. And that lamb skin had to come from a lamb. A lamb died that day. God put in place the plan of salvation. As we heard Tina talk about earlier, God promised that um, that day the seed of a woman would come and would crush the head of the serpent, but he would be bruised in his heel. He was pledging that Christ would come and would die for us. So he forgave them and he provided uh, the plan of salvation and that part of that plan of salvation is mankind is now going to be on probation. We're, we, you know, we'll have our short lives to live during which we can choose whether to rebel against God or accept his gift of salvation and choose to obey his wonderful requirement to love everybody and to love God. And note, note this, Genesis 2.17 God's warning says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it you shall surely die. Notice the punishment there is not you're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever. It is the day you eat it you shall surely die. The wages of sin is not burning forever, it's death. You're going to die. So... God, because he's so merciful, because he is forgiving, didn't immediately kill Adam and Eve. He had the right to under the law to do it, but he didn't. And it's probably same some of the reason. Why didn't he immediately kill Satan? Because I say Satan's under the same law. Satan has sinned, and Satan could be destroyed right away if God wanted. Same thing for Satan and all of his other angels. So why is God holding out? Why is God holding out? And by the way, we, we talked about John 3, 16 earlier, right? For God so loved the, the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Who has the everlasting life? Those who believe God. It doesn't say the sinners are going to have everlasting life burning forever. It says, no, the alternative to having everlasting life with God is perishing, being destroyed. So the Bible's so consistent on that. 
there's a couple verses which I, I understand how you can, uh, most people might think they mean um, burning forever and ever, but do you go with that understanding from a couple verses? Or is the greater weight, does, it's better to believe what 99% of the Bible says? That 99 should inform then that, that other 1% that seems to be in conflict of it. it. means we're not reading those verses correctly. So, why did Adam and Eve have to be kicked out though? Why, what happened? Isaiah 59, 2, it says, But your iniquities, our iniquities, have separated us from God. It's sin that separates us from God. It's not necessarily God separated us from Him. We need to start looking at it as it's our sins. What we're doing is separating us from God. We're separating ourselves from God. If we want to approach God, we need to start being in harmony with Him. And it's for our own protection, by the way. Mm -hmm. like if, you were, if we were to be in the presence of God, what would happen to us? What would happen to us? Well, look at, look at uh, you know, when Moses was before God and no, it was so bright and nobody else could be there. It was, it was blinding. Yeah, and just, and just Moses coming from being in the presence of God, he was so bright and luminous, people couldn't even stand to look at Moses. Right, right. Yeah. It was, yeah. Exactly. I mean, God is in this, His holiness is just so amazing. Like, you take even the prophets like Isaiah and Daniel, these people, when they're in the presence of even just an angel, they fall down. They can't even handle the presence of an angel. Mm -hmm. What can we do in the presence of God? So whenever we see God in the Bible, if He's showing His glory, if He's truly in His divine form, He's wrapped up in a cloud. He's doing something to conceal His, his divinity. Like Christ, he came wrapped up in flesh to hide his, his divinity so that we could be around him and approach him. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's a very important concept there of, of what's going on. And then we come to, let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 5.18. It says, Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Is there a word that keeps showing up again and again and again there? Reconciliation. Reconciliation, exactly. And, and is it that God needs help to reconcile himself to us no he's constantly doing that he's constantly yeah. trying to do that but we keep getting in the way of it he's more like that parent right where a kid has walked out and left the home and the dad the mom wanted to do everything to get that kid back want to reestablish that relationship mm -hmm. and the kid keeps saying mom and dad i don't want to have anything to do with you the parents are trying to reconcile they're trying to bring it back mm -hmm. that's how it is with god god wants to be able to bring us back into his home into his fold into his loving environment. And, That's what he wants. And, and let's be clear that the reason that that kid left wasn't because that kid had an issue with mom and dad and left. It was because somebody else told that kid a lie that made that kid doubt the relationship mm. with mom and dad. And, and that's why the kid left because the kid was told a lie and the parent is just there thinking, what has just happened? How have I lost my child? What, you know, it, the parent was not guilty of, mm -hmm. of anything in that situation. God was not guilty of, of failing Adam and Eve at right. all. The only thing God did was, or just like those parents, those parents didn't say, I'm going to lock you in your room and make sure you never leave me. Out of love, they trusted right. their kid. That's it. Right. So just like God trusted Adam and Eve. To have love, you have to have trust. Mm -hmm. You have to give breathing room. You have to allow people to have choices because forced love is not real love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, exactly. so God has to, or God chooses, he doesn't have to, right? But he chooses to prove his love, to win us back. Mm -hmm. And he also chooses to go out of his way to prove how bad sin is. Now, can you imagine the moment Satan starts thinking sinful thoughts? thoughts in his head, God just burns him up. 
disappears. He tells angels, everybody, you know, uh, Satan was starting to think some really bad things. I couldn't risk having him around for your benefit. Just mm -hmm. trust me. <laughs> Can you imagine all the angels are just staring? They're like, whoa, where did he go? Why did God do that? Would God do that to me? Wow, God seems like such a tyrant. Right. I'm really now scared of this God. Right. God didn't do that. He is so patient because mm -hmm. he wants to demonstrate just how bad sin is, mm -hmm. just how awful it is, why it can never be tolerated. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's even go back for a moment here about uh, the, for a moment here about being in the presence of God. Can we even afford to do that? Um, let's look at Exodus 24, verse 17. Exodus 24, verse 17. It says, To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain. Consuming fire. The glory of God is like a consuming fire. If we jump now to Isaiah 33, verses 14 to 16, it says, The sinners of Zion are afraid. Fearless has, fear, fearfulness has seized the hypocrites. They say, who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings? Oh, there's everlasting fire. Where is this? He who dwells, or he who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, he who despises gain of oppressions, who gestures with his hands, refusing bribes, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed, and who shuts his eyes from seeing evil, he will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of the rocks. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. So, who is the person that will dwell in the everlasting fire, according to Isaiah 33, 14 to 16? Is it the wicked, or is it the righteous? It's the righteous. It's the righteous. Wow. Stop Stop thinking about that. Who's dwelling in hell? <laughs> what most people think is hell, right? The everlasting burning fire. It's the righteous. The presence of God, God's glory, is everlasting fire. So we, when God talks about in the Bible, I want to refine you. Like I'm a fire and I want to refine you. And it talks about gold. What's special about gold is gold doesn't deteriorate in fire. Gold gets purified. So in Revelation 3, God says, I want my church, I want you to be to buy of me gold refined in the fire. God wants us to be like that gold that we can stand in his presence to be able to stand. Like if you look in Revelation 6, at the end of that chapter, it ends with the question, the world is being devastated. You know, God is appearing and people are quaking in their knees and they shout, who can stand? Mm -hmm in the presence of God, who can stand in the presence of the Lamb. And we know, we know, that's right, here we got it up on the screen, Revelation 6, 17. We're told here in Isaiah 33, it is the righteous, God's righteous people who can stand in His presence and stand in His glory, the fiery flames, the consuming flames of God's love. And if we are not in harmony with God and we're rejecting Him, those flames can become flames of destruction and devastation to us. That would be, it would literally be hell for, a righteous, for an unrighteous person to live in the presence of God. They will not be able to live in the presence of God. That is eternal torment to live forever and ever and ever in the presence of God and hate God and reject God. I, I just, I just, I just, I just got to Sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just thinking, um, you know, that goes so perfectly um, with the verse that I always think about when I think about, you know, <laughs> you know, what is hell and what is, you know, the the destruction of the wicked? What is their um, reward? And it's it's very clear when you look at the verse in Psalms 37, 20, and it says, but the wicked shall perish, just like John 3, 16, the, you know, those that don't believe, they perish. And it makes it even more clear in, here in Psalms 37, 20. Um, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume away. And mm. so they burn, but they burn up. And just like, you know, it says like the fat of lambs, because back when they did the 
the daily sacrifice, they, they offered a lamb and they would burn the fat and that was a symbol of sin. And just like um, sin, if we cling to sin, we'll, we'll consume away with it and it burns up because that's, <laughs> that's the way it goes. And I know that there's a verse in Revelation where people say, oh, it says that the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And I was like, yeah, the smoke does, but that doesn't mean they're burning still. This, their mm -hmm. smoke goes up because they just like smoke, cons you know, consume away. And so, um, and I think that's a fair and a just God who just says, you don't want to be with me. Okay. In me is life. If you, if you don't have mm -hmm. me life, so you're mm -hmm. choosing death and here you're destroyed and that's it. And so I think that God in his mercy allows that. And, and I, you know, I don't think that's his will for any of us, but I think yep. he's merciful in doing that. And can I just say like, what a powerful concept this is that you just talked about here. I mean, I don't, I, I feel like we need to take a minute to pause and reflect on this, that most people think of hellfire as the place where people are just destroyed. And or no, no, suffering. No. Actually, yeah, yeah, suffering sorry, forever people, and ever. Where people are just suffering forever and ever. God will reconstruct their body so he could just burn it again somehow. Yeah, which is just weird. It just doesn't even make sense with the character of God. God is so sadistic. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. when Winnie was talking about the lie being told about God, one of the biggest lies being told about God is this idea he does want to burn forever and ever. Right. The wicked. And so, so but what, what you have also done here is you have connected this consuming fire to being a place where righteousness stands like that you just completely flipped on the head what this concept that that we understand as this consuming fire is about most mm -hmm. people think of it as the fire where wicked suffer you just said it's the fire where righteousness stands and mm -hmm. is actually able to 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 stand and be strong and um, and I don't mean like, oh, I'm stronger than you strong, no, but like, but just be able to stand on your two feet. Just be there and just yeah. be like, there's fire around me and, and okay. whatever, there's fire around me. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego right. in the furnace. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whoa, like mind blown how big of a concept that, that is a different perspective that is that a healing perspective that is because that says like, it's not about running away from a fearful God. Like it's about running to a, a care, the, the character and the, the love of God that is like, though the world, though everything around me is burning, that is evil. I'm still okay. Yeah. I went to her. Oh, sorry. I, was, I wanted to say one more thing on that also, which is though the the sin and the evil and the wickedness that may be a part of me is being burned away. I am still standing there okay because I am choosing righteousness. I am choosing to hang on to the good and and let the evil be burned and away. And let the evil be burned away. Yeah. Yeah. Mind blowing. <laughs> I, I know, and I once heard um, in a sermon, uh, a pastor express it that God wants to make us fireproof. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me because I was like, that's absolutely true. If we are, are free from sin, if we are clinging to Jesus and his righteousness, we will be fireproof, just like you're saying, our brothers uh, Shadrach, Meshach, mm -hmm. and Abednego in the fiery furnace with Jesus. You know, um, and I think that's so important to keep in mind, you know, the, the reality of what the Bible is saying about fire and eternal fire and, and what that means. Because, you know, I think that the devil has done a really good job in portraying mm -hmm. God as this evil, he's going to burn you in hell forever. And that's yeah. not God's character. God yeah. has got love. And yeah. so, yeah, I totally am with you on this, um, on this, you know, train of thought, because this is absolutely, you know, us def not just defending you know god as far as you know the bible homiletics but this is mm -hmm. defending his character who he is and mm -hmm. he is love yeah exactly and talk about that Doug, god's character like let's take a look at isaiah 28 starting at verse 21 and and we're talking about here something that god doesn't like doing and he only wants to do one time so isaiah 28 verse 21 it says for the lord will rise up 
as at Mount Perizim. He will be angry as in the Valley of Gibeon that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. It's unusual because he normally does not do this. This is not what he likes to do. But, and what is this? We're talking about verse 22. Now, therefore, do not be mockers, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a destruction determined upon the whole earth. Look at this, a destruction. The whole world is going to be destroyed. Like you read Peter, uh, I think Jude, they all talk about that the whole world, inclu including the heavens, our atmosphere, everything is going to melt away in fervent heat. God's just going to burn everything, start over. So when we talk about not loving this world, like, yeah, don't get too attached because nothing you see here is going to be left. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be burned. And then we get to Revelation 21, I believe it is, where it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And actually, oh, I have a verse here. That that have new heaven and new earth reference in Revelation is actually quoting Isaiah. Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be re remembered nor come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, mm -hmm. and her people a joy. God wants to create a happy, joyful, peaceful place where we can all feel safe. We're not going to have our stuff stolen. We're not going to have people lie to us, just like as the, the, face, the Facebook user said. God doesn't want his children to have any wicked people around them to hurt his love, the people he loves. Mm -hmm. This is why he's so angry at sin, because he's seen sin hurting the people he loves. He never wants to see that happen mm -hmm. ever again. And the only way to make sure that never happens again is by truly condemning sin, making sure that sin never ever comes back. And so Jesus came in the flesh and in doing so he condemned sin in the flesh. But it takes a long time. Proverbs 15, 18. Proverbs 15, 18. It says, a hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Mm -hmm. The one who is patient calms a quarrel. God is waiting so patiently to calm this huge, huge, massive conflict he has with Satan. Satan is rebellious, he's raging the war, and God has to do it the right way to stamp it down and make sure it will never come up a second time. And that's exactly what the Bible says. Um, let me pull up that verse. I think Ezekiel, yeah, Ezekiel 28. Verse 18 to 19. Oh, no, no, no. That's not it. Uh, no, I have it somewhere. Tina. Oh, is it Nahum? Yeah, it's Nahum. Nahum 1 9. It says, What do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. He's going to make an utter end of sin. Affliction will not rise up a second time. Why not? Because God has let sin run its full course. God has shown that sin will always lead to the murder and kill and suffering of the innocent, the people who don't deserve it. This is why Christ had to come as a perfect human being, not sin, and yet still have sin kill him. And this is why just before Christ comes again, God's going to have a people who will have the character of Christ perfected in them, and they will again show the love of Christ and the love of God to the world and the world will love will hate them and want to kill them just because they are perfect because they are loving because they are on God's side and it's at that time that God will have to intervene to protect them and bring an end to sin at that time that's when it's done sin has shown just how wicked how terrible it is and the universe will know for a certainty God is good and sin must be wiped out. Yeah, so powerful. It really is. And God is so good in how he deals with us and, you know, not according to our sins, but according to his mercy. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just so grateful that that is the God that we serve. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that he's he is loving even in how he deals with sinners and, you know, rebellion. 
So um, I we hope had a that couple, we had a couple comments here from mm -hmm. Olivia as well. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, God is a God of love and justice. Burning a person who sinned for 70 years is not just. Therefore, eternal fire is not according to God's character or yeah. nor nature. Evil humans cannot wish etern eternal cannot wish eternal hell that for their children. So how could a loving God be that way? Yep. Exactly. Exactly. You know, yeah. That says it all. 